Uh, my name is uh, Jim Casper, representative from North Dakota. My hometown is Fargo. Been in the North Dakota legislature since 2001. Uh, chairman of the Government and Veterans Affairs Committee for five sessions. Ran for majority leader in North Dakota last session. Unfortunately, second place is not a winner, but uh, I'm enjoying my time in North Dakota. We're part-time legislature in North Dakota every other year for a maximum of 80 days. I've been a constitutionalist my whole lifetime that I can remember. As a matter of fact, I always carry a constitution with me. In the floor of the house, I'm known as Mr. Constitution. I respect the Constitution. I love the founding fathers and what they stood for and how they drafted our Constitution. Uh, I've been in, Far in Fargo politics and North Dakota politics since 1980 when a friend of mine asked me to join uh, the, the Fargo Republican Party. I told him I thought I'm a Democrat. And he said, uh, why is that? And I said, well, my mom's a Democrat, my dad's a Democrat, I must be a Democrat. And he said, well, let me tell you the philosophically the differences. And he did, and afterwards I said, well, I'm obviously a Republican, what do I do? So give me a check for $100 and come to the next Fargo Republican meeting. That's how I got involved in 1980. And at that time, you know, you go back that far, we had more of a constitutional republic back then. But unfortunately, the Congress, Washington, the swamp, they've lost their way. And as time has gone on, I've become more and more active in the, the Convention of States movement. I've uh, sponsored bills in the North Dakota legislature. We've actually passed four uh, uh, convention of state bills in, the, in North Dakota from 2013 to 2019 came through my committee and I was a sponsor of one of them, a co-sponsor of the other. And I was uh, blessed to be able to be here in the 2016 convention. So I brought two of my new colleagues with me to, to enjoy the experience, to see what it's really like compared to the uh, false uh, criticism of there's going to be a potential runaway convention that's going to mess our constitution up. So that's why I'm here. What was your experience like? It's very similar to 2016. Uh, the good news is there were more uh, states represented. I think, I think in 2016, I think we had 39 states. Now we had 49 states. Uh, the process is great. The only criticism I have is it's too short. Uh, you get into uh, you know a day and a half actually convention, and you really can't flesh out uh, everything that you should for the wordsmithing of the resolutions that we passed. But it's a great experience, and uh, I'm uh, I'm certainly. Uh, hopeful and, and pretty certain that the people that were here today, a lot of them were new from you know, 2016, will take the message back to their, to their states, to their legislatures, to their colleagues, their friends, and talk about what a convention of the states is all about. And let the people understand that this is the way for the states to get control back that we've lost to, an, to a really an, uh, a crazy United States Congress. Well, I was on the, uh, the Federal uh, Fiscal Re Restraint and, and Review uh, and Jurisdictional Committee, and that was the last one that we heard. And, and I think we did really, really well. Uh, you know, the, the lands, getting, getting the federal lands out of the control of the federal government. In North Dakota, we're an oil-rich state, uh, but uh, the federal government uh, stops us from drilling because they won't do the leases. As, as you heard some of the speakers say this afternoon, in some of the western states, they have trillions of barrels of reserves in oil and other minerals. They can't get at it because the federal government owns the land. So the federal government is holding the United States and the citizens and the states hostage. When you have a president who is out of control and out of balance, and you have a, a, legis a Congress, both the Democrats and the Republicans, and I'm, and I'm a conservative Republican, not really looking at the Constitution, not really doing their job, the, the system is broken. So we have the opportunity under Article 5 to take control back in the states where the, where the, the, uh, co the, the country began. We are a federation of states. We're not a federal government developing the states. We're a group of states who developed the federal government and put the federal government in control through the Constitution. Our founding fathers were brilliant, but the, the system has become out of control and we need, to get the, we need to get the power back in the states. Favorite moment, uh, just meeting new people. I, I can't say one in particular. Uh, you know, during the, during the debate. We had a wonderful floor session or committee session yesterday, but it's just meeting new people. I met some really great friends from South Dakota, our neighbors to the south, from Iowa, from Minnesota, uh, from uh, Virginia, from North Carolina. There's wonderful people all over. I was so impressed with the, with the intellect and the in-depth knowledge that so many of the speakers have, that they were sharing some of, the, some of their experiences and, and some of the history of the Constitution. And, and uh, just getting to know those, those people, it, it, that's, that's really a good part of this. The, the relationships you form, they, they last a lifetime.
The argument of the naysayers against, uh, they call it a constitutional convention. That's wrong. The convention is a convention of the states to come together as we did uh, the last two days to debate and propose amendments to the United States Constitution. This convention does nothing but propose amendments. And the Constitution under Article 5 says that once we have this convention, then any articles that are passed out of this convention goes back to all 50 state legislatures and 38 state legislatures, both the House and the Senate, must pass any one of those proposed amendments for it to amend the United States Constitution. Our founding fathers were very fearful of a federal government that would overgrow, overreach, and become too powerful. That's what we've got. At the end of that convention, they said, you know what, we've got to protect the people of the nation, the citizens, their liberty, by allowing them to call a convention of states through the state legislatures, and that's why they put in Article 5. So it's time. The, the argument about a runaway convention is, is really phony. It could never happen because the convention makes no decisions except recommendations. The state legislatures out of 38 states. Can you imagine that you would have a proposed amendment to the United States Constitution that did not make a lot of sense to get 38 state legislatures, both the House and the Senate of those 38 states, except Nebraska, who is only unicameral, have to pass it? So this, this is just a phony argument, but I'd love to have that debate anytime. It, uh, the process is the way the process would be. Uh, there's great leadership here this time, as there was last time. Uh, but uh, again, just the speed, the speed. I, I didn't quite remember that it went that fast, but it really goes fast. And then, then today, the, the process where, uh, where uh, Woody uh, Jenkins had to move it along pretty fast because we were running out of time. And I just wish we had had more time to debate some of the issues. But uh, other than that, no, no surprise. Just good to see that the, con the Convention of States movement is, is alive and well. It's been time for an Article 5 convention for maybe 20 years because of the mess we have in Washington, D.C. However, the Constitution under Article 5 has very strict guidelines. 34 state legislatures must pass a very similar, almost word-for-word -word resolution to be able to have a convention of states. So until the state legislatures wake up and get some courage, and, and the people of our nation need to be educated about what an Article 5 convention of the states is all about, it's not going to happen. So the sooner the better, but we, we've got to get 34 state legislatures to say, let's come. Then we'll have one. It's time. It can be done. It will be effective. So, so I think there are people who've never even heard of it that are going to see this and be impressed. And I think that builds enthusiasm. This is the defining moment and the last opportunity to get our republic right. We need a solution as big as the problem.